towards nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exalt. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong. Fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened. The ears of the deaf be clear. Then will the lamb leap like a stag, and the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will reach there and enter Zion sailing, singing, crowned with everlasting joy, they will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm because the coming of the Lord is at hand. 
Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before your gates. Take an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? And what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. What? Why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there have been none greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this evening, the weekend, we're celebrating it's called Gaudete Sunday from the Latin. It means rejoice. It's from our entrance antiphon. Rejoice the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. The Lord is near. That's from the Philippians. And so that's why we have uh, the rose-colored candle on the Advent wreath lit, symbolizing rejoicing and joy. And I wear uh, this rose-colored vestment. The reason it's so clean is we only use it twice a year, and that's Gaudete Sunday and Laetare Sunday, which is Lent. Uh, don't ask me why two Latin words mean the same thing, uh, but they both mean rejoice. And so for Advent, we're getting closer to Christmas, and for Lent, we're getting closer to Easter. And so Advent has twofold theme, the first theme is really preparing for the second coming for penitential. And that's why violet is used, that's this color of penance. But then as we get closer to Christmas, it's also about the first coming of Christ, which is his birth in, Beth in Bethlehem. And so it's interesting from the Hebrew, uh, Bethlehem means house of bread. And so we already see a, a pointer to the Eucharist, even at the Christ's birth. And in, in Christ being the light of the world, with the star above the stable. And so that's another symbol of the Advent wreath, more uh, 
the weeks go by, it's brighter and brighter. Um, and some even have a middle candle that, uh, for Christmas, which just represents uh, the day of Christmas, and it's usually white. And the point is that Christ is the light of the world. And so I found, also, I want to talk about uh, joy. And joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit that we received at baptism and confirmation, and I received it at the Holy Orders. Joy is different from happiness. So happiness is affected by our circumstances, things going well in our opinion, we're happy. And when things are not going well in our opinion, we're unhappy. Joy is not affected by outward circumstances. So an extreme example would be Mary at the foot of the cross, and though she's very upset and uh, mourning her son, she still has joy. She can't take joy away. Joy is not something that could uh, be affected by outside circumstances. So I wanted to share with you uh, what I found in uh, the Little Blue Book. I was reading it, I was helping with confessions at Pope John Paul II High School in Boyersford. And when there was a little break between the two class periods, I, I read my little book to make people think I was holy. And <laughs> as I was reading it, I came across uh, one of the pages that talks about joy, even though it's not for today, it was actually for Friday, the first week of Advent, if you have the book. Uh, but I thought it was, it was helpful, so I'm gonna share it with you uh, verbatim, meaning word for word. And the lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, Joy, tidings of great joy, joy to the world. The word joy can mean happiness, gladness, delight, cheer, glee, intoxication. When Jesus says to the disciples at the Last Supper table, I have told you that, that this, so that my joy might be in you and your joy would be complete. He uses the Greek word uh, kara, taken from the word charis, which means grace. That's getting to the heart of what biblical joy really means. Simply put, grace means God leaning toward me, bending over me, inclining toward me kindly and favorably. That what God, that's what God is, and that's what, who God is for me. There is never a moment when God isn't bending toward me that way. No matter what the situation, God is leaning towards me kindly and favorably. It's God's initiative. It's got nothing to do with whether I deserve it. And that's a tiding of great joy. And then it had as the um, little scripture citation from Isaiah. And on that day, the deaf shall hear the words of the book, and out of gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see, the lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. And that's very much connected to our gospel where Isaiah is quoted really saying what, what are the signs of the Messiah it's not everyone being healed and so that's why it's just interesting the Pharisees and Sadducees see all these miracles but they don't focus on the fact that it's fulfilling Isaiah and the prophecy of the Messiah they focus on the law they say Jesus you're working on the Sabbath you broke the law and it's really about a power struggle between the Pharisees the Sadducees and Jesus it's more about uh, power rather than truth. I just want to share with you from, uh, an article I found from a philosopher, Peter Kreeft. He talks about um, joy as well. That old self has sold itself to the devil. It's the microphone that sits there behind our ears, chattering away, we're about to give ourselves to God, it instantly whispers to us, careful now, hold back, don't get close to him. He's dangerous, in fact, he's a killer. That's referring to God. The voice speaks some truth. Even the devil has to begin with some truth in order to twist it into a lie. It's true, God is a killer. If you let him, he will kill your old, selfish, unhappy, bored, wretched, mistrusting, loveless self, and turn you into a person and a disciple filled with joy.
It stands for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, for the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from God, 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 for us men and our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the Holy Spirit was a part of the heart of Mary, and he came in. For our sake, who is crucified our much as Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and accords with scriptures, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have an army. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father, the Son is the Lord, and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I confess one that the baptism of the innocent sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we await the coming of the Lord and his kingdom, let us offer our needs and prayers of this day to him. That Christ may form church leaders into prophets and messengers to prepare his way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord our judge may bring vindication and divine recompense for the oppressed of our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus may bless with joy and gladness all experiencing sorrow and mourning this holiday season. Let us pray to the Lord. That this Eucharistic community may be get granted the gifts of wisdom and fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. That those suffering from illness or disease may be comforted by the presence of Christ walking with them. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have died, especially Paul Simeon, May be crowned with everlasting joy by our Lord in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the intentions we hold the silence of our hearts. We pray in particular for the happy repose of the soul of Norma Beck, for whom this mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord God, there is nothing more powerful than your grace and mercy. Hear our prayers and grant that we ask in Christ our Lord. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 55. See how the Virgin waits. 55.
Pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours, and my acceptable to God, the mighty Father. May your Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly, and complete what we've begun in sacred mystery, and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is for Absolutely right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. For by his gift that already we rejoice with the mystery of his nativity, that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels and thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as of the end, we acclaim. <laughs> these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, we offer you first of your holy Catholic Church. We plead to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Nelson our Bishop, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all those according to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants among the living. all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise they offer to themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glories of the Virgin Mary, the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Joseph, our spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all the saints, we ask through their merits and prayers, and all things that may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, and of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and be counted among the flock of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, and may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread into his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, the Almighty Father, giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice into his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said, Blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <laughs> Passion, 
resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, your holy people, offer your glorious majesty and the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Please look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as one who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of our high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice and spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of the holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, that all of us, in this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, to be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Plus also your servants who those sinners, open your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share and fellowship your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, with whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. We will live and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, of the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Honor as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us where we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and sick from distress. As we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, and your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin from the faith of your church. We graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Away the sins of the world, plus of those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not for me, but you can enter into my room. Always in the word, my soul shall be healed.
have a communion hymn is number five nine nine. I want to walk as a child of the light. Five nine nine. Body of Christ. Funeral Mass for Paul Simeon will be held on Saturday, December the 17th at 11 a.m. with visitation from 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. Thank you to all who supported the Knights of Columbus Crafty Excel. The Scouts of Chester County thank you for your support and generosity with their wreath sale. A special thanks to all who so generously donated to this year's Advent Giving Tree. And please refer to the bulletin and our website for other announcements. Let us pray. 
We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults, prepare us for the coming feast of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Now, Adam, pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of His only begotten Son, and yearn for His second coming, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with His blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may it make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, we may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessed Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down in you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be you to be humbly proud. Do thou, as the heavenly hosts, for the power of God, cast in all safety, and all the evil spirits, crown up the world, seeking the Lord of souls. Amen. As we, as we go forth, let's join together in singing number 5 9, the advent of our King. 5 9. 